Okay, today we are going to study how to compute the expectation of a linear combination of multiple random variables. But before that, I think it's useful to know what holds for expectation operator and what doesn't hold. Here, I put seven expressions, some of which are not true. So I want to ask you, which do you think are true? in general, and which do you think are not true in general? It is known that the first four are not true in general. For example, the first expression says that the expectation of the square of a random variable is equal to the square of the expectation of that random variable, which is not true in general. Which means what? For example, suppose you order pizza, okay? And suppose you don't know the actual radius or size of the pizza until you see it. But suppose by experience you know that the expected radius of the pizza is 10 inches. Even if the expected radius of the pizza is 10 inches, the expected size of the pizza is not equal to pi times 10 squared. It's, it's larger than that. Okay, That's the meaning of the first fact. Similarly, the expectation of the inverse of a random variable is not equal to the inverse of its expectation. The third expression says the expectation of the product of two random variables is not generally equal to the product of the two expectations. Similarly, the expectation of the division of two random variables is not equal to the division of the corresponding expectations. But the good news is that the expectation operator satisfies so-called linearity. For example, the expectation of 10 times random variable x is simply equal to 10 times its expectation. The expectation of the sum of two random variables is simply equal to the sum of their expectations. And also the expectation of 2 times x plus 3 times y minus 5 times z, z is also another random variable, is simply equal to 2 times the expectation of x plus 3 times the expectation of y minus 5 times z, expectation of z. In other words, you can take these constant coefficients and plus and minus operators out of the expectation. This gives us a very useful formula, that is the expectation of a linear combination of random variables. A linear combination of variables x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 xn is simply the sum of these variables with some constant coefficients in front of them. One example is 3 times x1 plus 0.5 times x2 minus 10 times x3 plus 8 times x4. This is a linear combination. An important thing is that there is no square term. There is no product of two random variables, there is no division, and so on. The formula is that the expectation of a linear combination of random variables is simply equal to the linear combination of their expectations. Okay? Here, x's are random variables, but w's are just constants, like c, 0.5, minus 10, and 8, in this example. The expectation of the above linear combination can be calculated as 3 times the expectation of x1 plus 0.5 times the expectation of x2 and so on. This formula is useful because as long as you know the expectations of individual random variables, you can immediately compute any linear combination of those random variables. Now, using the vector notation, the right-hand side of this formula can be expressed in a fancy way. So define mu as the vector of the expectations. 
So mu1 is the expectation of x1, mu2 is the expectation of x2, dot dot dot, mu n is the expectation of this last random variable. Also, define w as the vector of the coefficients. So in this example, w1 is 3, w2 is 0.5, w3 is minus 10, and wn is 8. Then, the right-hand side of the formula is now simply mu times w, the inner product of the two vectors, the vector of expectations and the vector of the coefficients. If you forgot what the inner product of two vectors is, the inner product is simply the sum of the products. First, you take the products of corresponding components, mu1, w1, mu2, w2, and so on, and you then sum them up. That's called inner product of two vectors, so this formula basically tells you that the expectation of a linear combination of random variables is simply mu times w. Let's see an example application of the formula. So I just repeated the formula from the previous slide here. Why is this formula useful? Think of an investment example. Suppose you, an investor, and you face five company stocks, shares, A, B, C, D, E. So random variables are returns of these five company stocks. Okay. Suppose you already know the expected returns of these five company stocks, A, B, C, D, E. In other words, you already have the vector mu, the vector of the expected returns of the five companies. Aviva's expected return for the next month is 1.1%, British Gas 0.9%, and so on. Suppose you construct your own portfolio composed of these stocks. Let's say you have £3,000 and you decide to invest 40% of your money in Aviva's stocks and 20% of your money in British Gas stocks and 5% of your money in EasyJet, and so on. Then, you can compute the expected return on your portfolio using this formula. It's easy. So, portfolio return is just the inner product of the expectation vector mu and the weight vector w which is equal to 0.4, the weight for Aviva's stocks, times 1.1%, Aviva's expected return, plus 0.2, the weight for the British gas stocks, times 0.9%, the expected return of British gas, and so on. So, if you choose this particular weight for your portfolio, the expected return on your portfolio is, according to this formula, 1.0625%. Okay? So as long as you get the information about, about the expected returns of individual stocks from your portfolio manager or analysts, and as long as you decide the portfolio weights for your own portfolio, Using this formula, you can immediately compute the expected return of your portfolio.